everything in life starts with your mindset first and your actions second your actions follow your thoughts your beliefs and ideas to make a shift to free your energy start with getting your mind right and then take action Woo, that's powerful just i'll read it second time a bit first so that we can get into the conversation of today everything in life starts with your mindset first and your actions second so your actions follow your thoughts your beliefs and ideas to make a shift to free your energy so start with getting your mind right then take action and this leads us to the very first conversation of the day with our author and leadership consultant dr wale akinyemi randi bumper before we start this show hi dr wale hello good morning good morning how was your weekend it was really really good huh yeah yeah, I was, I'm on my 11th book. <laughs> and I, I started my, yeah, I'm on my 11th. I, I just finished my 11th. So I'm on my, I'm start, I started my 12th. How do you do that? Well, when you understand the power of time, you know, the yeah. things that matter be left at the expense of things that are not important that is true that is true and talking about things that are important we're talking about the mindset and how important that is it was tied in with a quote of the day today and you'd given us a teaser on to how we're just going to start this week with that right mindset yes i think um to start with we need to ask ourselves what is a mindset that's a good place to start it's a fixed belief system that a person has that governs decision making. So basically, it's like just Android for every individual. All right. So your mindset is your operating system. Now, that operating system is the filter through which all information that you receive throughout your life will be processed and it will determine the choices you make and your views about life. People may convince themselves that, ah, you know what, I have a good mindset, I don't have a limiting mindset and all that, but ultimately our default responses to situations will reveal our mindset your default responses. You know, um, there are two examples I like to give. One of them is very hilarious from the Bible. When um, the children of Israel have left Egypt and they're in the wilderness, and then Moses goes up into the mountain to meet with God, and Moses is delaying. So the children of Israel meet Aaron and say, this man is not here. What are we going to do? Make God. We can walk. Oh, I lost you, Wale. Oh, okay. What was the last thing you heard? They went to Aaron to tell him this guy has been up there for a bit. Yes, this guy hasn't come. So make us gods that we can worship, you know, without thinking. Aaron said, okay, give me your earrings. He knew what to do. <laughs> so even though they had left Egypt, the Egyptian way of doing things had not left him. We have another example where God told Moses, speak to the, hit the rock, water will come out. Then later on, God said, speak to the rock. What did Moses do? He hit the rock. Why? That was the mindset. That was what he was used to. Your mindset will determine which opportunity you can see and which opportunity you grab in the course of your life. With the wrong mindset, you can be in the midst of abundance and all you see is poverty. And with the right mindset, you can be in the midst of poverty and you are seeing opportunities. If the voice 
of your past is louder than the voice of today's opportunities, it does not matter how great the opportunity is, you will not see it. So my challenge to people is don't leave your mind in your past. Don't let your mind be a prisoner of your negative experiences. Set your mind to the future. Develop your mind to develop your life. You see, um, use your mind, as it were, to prepare for the future. There are three kinds of people I like to look at. There are those whose brains die before they die. There are those whose brains die when they die. But then there are those whose brains never die. Because their ideas and thoughts influence decisions years after they have gone. So you think of people like um, Thomas Edison. You think of people like Moses. You think of people like, you know, there are people whose minds are still alive and influencing behavior today. We can do a further classification. Those whose lives are behind the reality of the times. Those whose lives are at par with the reality of times and those whose minds, rather, are ahead of the reality of the times. You see, the third group of people, that's where we want to be, where our minds are ahead. You know, these are the people that define what tomorrow will be like. You see, some people want to be fashionable. But do we know, do we realize that some people determine what fashion will be? Some people read the map, others draw the map. Some are innovation junkies, pride themselves that we're early adapters to new innovation, but some people determine what the innovation of tomorrow will be like. So it is important for you, and all this is determined by mindset. It is important for you, never allow your memory to be more active than your imagination. Don't let yesterday's experience paint the pictures dominating your life today. Because experience limits you to what is known. Imagination opens you up to the possible. And if you don't know what is possible, you will settle for what is available. So we are not victims of life. We are victims of our minds. You see, there are leaders with a mindset uh -huh. who will take little things and do wonders and you have great then you have leaders who have an abundance of resources and you see nothing you know that even corruption is an expression of a fixed mindset these are people who are appointed into office and suddenly there's so much money and they are, in their minds, they can never conceive how they can make money without being in office. So what has gone to this? Is it like, this is our time, you know? So it is very important. Again, let me reiterate, we are not victims of the things that happen. We are victims of how we respond. People have overcome bigger challenges than the things we are going through sometimes, you know? And even in the world of business, many whose mindsets have been shaped by the old models will find it difficult to see opportunities in digital and new models. So how are we going to move forward? You need to change your wine skin. You cannot put new wine in old wine skin. The fixed mindset says, this is how I am. That's just it. I can do nothing about it. But the growth mindset says, this is how I am right now. I can change and become something else. Now, people with this kind of growth mindset are always high performing and they are more likely to thrive. One book that I read that, you know, <clears throat> really inspired me, and I'll share some books so people, you know, want to read books. This one is called Smart Thinking by Art Markman. And they gave an example in this book about, you know, <clears throat> um, there was a test that was done. They picked people in a class who had um, high IQs. And so they were selected and put in a particular group. Now, and they followed them through life. There was a particular person there 
a man called Shockley, who wanted to be part of this team, but they said he did not have the requisite IQ. Well, they followed them through life. Do you know the interesting thing that happened? Years later, all those who supposedly had the higher IQ, they lived pretty normal lives. And this Shockley, who was told you cannot be there, went on to win a Nobel Prize. So even your intelligence is not fixed. You can grow it. And one of the ways to grow it, tomorrow I'm going to be sharing on how mindsets are developed. But some of the books that have helped, you know, apart from smart thinking, there is this one, Mindset by Carol Dweck. There is this one, The Power of Habit by Charles Doheg. And there is this one, The Code of the Extraordinary Mind. All right. These are things, resources that I believe will help people in their journey to developing a growth mindset. But I'm going to focus more on that tomorrow, the growth mindset about that because like everything else in life it's a skill that you need to nurture especially if you've just been living your life without thinking about how it all starts from here then you will you yeah. need to now start working on it like you work on everything else to work on growing this part or controlling this part of your of your body to help you now create the right direction or maybe change the beliefs and the ideals that you've been living believing in all your life or not believing in uh in yeah. your life we go to the when we want to develop our muscles and we want to stay physically healthy we know we ought to go to the gym but many of us are developing our physical bodies at the expense of our minds we are not going to the mental gym and so we have strong bodies and weak minds true. that's true <laughs> I think it's better if you grow up here and just work on the body later. But most of the times we just live our lives without knowing that this is where it all goes wrong. This is why you'll grow up saying, oh, our family is like this. Oh, our country has always been like this. And there's nothing we can do about it. I'm sure there are people who've tried and they were not able to. What makes it different for me? What makes you think that I can do it? You see, so you'll live a life of not being fully present or not being aware that you actually have the power within you to actually change situations around you. Absolutely. And we are, a lot of people are prisoners of that thinking. You know, um, like tomorrow when I talk about how mindsets are developed, let me give you a sneak preview into that. When I was growing up, anytime I asked my mom, maybe I want a pair of shoes or I want something, my mom's default statement was, ah, money does not grow on trees. Do you think money grows on trees? Money is not easy to come by. So guess what? I had a mindset that saw life as very difficult. Now, and that began to influence everything I did. If I was in a car and with my mom and I looked at it, maybe there's a nice car that drove past, I looked at it, my mom would immediately say, hmm, not everything that glitters is gold, though. Not everything that glitters is gold. So you know what that did to me? In my mind, it had built a correlation between living the good life and being a thief. And because I never wanted to be a thief, even when opportunities to prosper me came at a certain stage in my life, I turned them back because my life was being governed by my mindset. You know, and so many people are there. There was a case, I was working in England. I was in London and um, this guy, I came out of the, of the place where I was training and this guy, you know, drove in, in a red sports car, a really nice sports car. He's an Italian guy. And he came to me and he said, oh, I love the way you're dressed. I said, thank you, sir. He said, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm a corporate trainer and um, leadership consultant. He said, so you talk to people. How often do you meet with people? I said, virtually every day I am talking with leaders and decision makers. He said, really, every day? I said, yes, every day. Then he brought out two leather jackets. Beautiful. Each one of those jackets was a thousand pounds. Now, again, mindset. So immediately I converted it to Kenya shillings. I said, these people must be mad. Anyway, so... He come, I told me, he said, I want 
Of course, I've converted to Kenya shillings, and I say I'm not mad. Why would I? One thousand pounds for a jacket? Does it have air conditioner? I said I don't <laughs> want. Then he said no. See mindset. He said you don't have to pay for it. He brought out his uh -huh. and gave a business card. He said anytime you speak to people and you are using the putting on this jacket and they tell you they like it, just give them my business card. That was a fact. But you see, you will never prosper beyond what your mindset will allow. So as I was collecting the jacket, my mother had died years before this. As I was collecting the jacket, I heard my mother's voice. Wale, Wale, Wale. How many times have I never collect anything from strangers? Oh, never collect anything from strangers. <laughs> so guess uh -huh. who knew that I was then? I had collected it. As I had my mother's voice, I returned it. Oh. That's if the voice of your past is louder than the voice of opportunity, you will never see the opportunity, no matter how good it is. That's why we need to change the programming of your past. Absolutely. I love it. I'm excited for tomorrow. You always leave us at, uh, at the edge, almost jumping over like, I'll be here tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll be talking about, you know, the growth mindset, how to just activate that to keep it going. And uh, while before you go, maybe you can share your platforms with our social media and all and YouTube as well as look forward to tomorrow. Yes, thank you very much. Follow me on Wale at um, or on Twitter at Wale Akiemi. And you get to follow me. If you follow me, there are a whole lot of stuff going on. On Facebook, Wale Akiemi resource page. On YouTube, Wale Akiemi. And my website, you need to go there, www.thestreetuniversity.com. We are reimagining Africa. And that's why we need people like you who will reimagine Africa and not go forward with the mindset that we were handed over. We need to create new mindsets that we will hand over to the future. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Wale. Looking forward to tomorrow. And that was business, uh, that was advice circle for you that happens every morning, Monday to Wednesday. You catch me and Dr. Wale here just spewing amazing energies every morning. We're taking a very short commercial break. We will be right back. <laughs>